What's up, skeptics? Welcome to another episode of Reason to Doubt, your source for all things skeptical. I have emerged from my time in the salt mines, taken a brief break away from the desk where my corporate overlords have me chained to talk about everyone's favorite tablecloth, the Shroud of Turin. Specifically, there's a paper that was published last month uh, at time of uh, streaming. So this is August 2025. It was published in July of 2025. And uh, this paper used 3D modeling to analyze whether the image on the Shroud of Turin is consistent with it having been draped over a body, say the corpse of the recently crucified Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, spoiler, no, no, it's not. So we're going to talk about the paper. We're going to talk about what it says. We're going to talk about what it doesn't say and like what reactions. I haven't seen any reactions yet, or I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't watched them from uh, Shroud of Turn proponents, but I already know what answer they're going to give to it. So it is pretty predictable. And at the end of the episode, for those who are interested, I'll be talking about what's been going on with me lately, uh, just sort of an update. So if that's something you care about, stick around to the end. So anyway. Uh, the paper in question is this paper right here, Image Formation on the Holy Shroud, a Digital 3D Approach. It was published in the journal Archaeometry on July 18th, 2025 by Cicero Mor uh, Moraes. And it starts with an overview of the Shroud of Turin debate so far. Uh, it goes on for a few pages. I'm not going to take the time on this stream to go through the whole history of it that he lays out in the paper. If you're interested, you can see it yourself. Um, or I've, of course, done many videos on the history of the Shroud of Turin. If somehow you have stumbled on this video and you have no idea what we're talking about, this is what the Shroud looks like. It is a linen cloth, uh, that brown stuff in the middle that you can barely see. That is allegedly the image of Jesus of Nazareth. Proponents believe that this was wrapped over him when he died and as a result of the resurrection in some way, shape, or fashion, it left the image. Now, you're probably more used to seeing it like this. This is a negative of that positive image. So the other one is what you'd see if you looked at it with your eyeballs. This one is reversing all the colors. It's a little easier to see like that, front and back, sideways like that. So what the question that Cicero was trying to examine is, uh, what is the best explanation or the best match for the cloth as we see it? And what he was mainly concerned about was imagine that whether by a corpse or on a statue or whatever, imagine that the image, however it was made, was made as a result of contact with some surface, whether that be the body or whatever. Uh, he doesn't, he very explicitly says he's not going to talk about the chemical or the physical nature of the image. He's not going to talk about the presence or absence of pigments, you know, bodily fluids, anything else like that. This is, uh, so other than the assumption that contact would have something to do with the image, he's not talking about image formation at all. Um, so the paper goes on in gory detail about both the, the backdrop. He does pause for a second to take a shot at the people doing the waxes study, which uh, a few years ago or last year, I guess, kind of it was published a few years ago and last year people suddenly realized it had been published and made a big deal of it. Um, he points out that the same people who published the study, like they then published, basically they published the methodology and then the exact same people used it with nobody else looking at it at any point, um, which he says uh, the practice was widely questioned in academic debates. Uh, which is an understatement, I think. But aside from that that uh, spicy jab, there you know isn't a whole lot here if you're familiar with the background. Um, but he does give uh, his methods, which is ex very detailed, exactly what software he used, the settings he used, etc. So it wouldn't be too hard for someone with experience in 3D modeling and time to reproduce his um, results, which is great. So uh, we're going to go straight to the results themselves. Um, but before we get into the results, I want to show a video that he links. So the author made a video of his work, which is actually just really cool. And it kind of talks about the distortion you'd see if this was, if this cloth was draped on a body. And I'm just going to let him explain it. Chat, let me know if you have trouble hearing the audio for some reason. There is basically, there should be the guy talking in the background. When you wrap a 3D object with a fabric, and that object leaves a pattern, 
like blood stents. These stents generate a more robust and more deformed structure in relation to the source. So, roughly speaking, what we see is a result of a printing stents from a human body would be more swollen and distorted version of it, not an image that looks like a photocopy. A bar relief, however, wouldn't cause the image to deform, resulting in a figure that resembles a photocopy of the body. Any careful adult can test it at home, for example, by painting your face with some pigment liquid using a large napkin or paper towel or even fabric and wrapping it around your face. Then take the fabric out, spread it on a flat surface and see the resulting image. This deformation is known as the mask of Agamemnon effect, as it resembles that ancient artifact. So yeah, that uh, video I thought was really cool and very uh, clearly shows the distortion you'd see if uh, whatever image came uh, was from just contact with the cloth of a full body, because the cloth is wrapped all around. So when you, it, it's getting a 3D imprint, basically the front and sides of the face. But when you unfurled it, it would all be in a 2D plane, right? Um, now this is not a groundbreaking observation. This has been known and uh, talked about for decades. So this is why, for example, proponents of the radiation hypothesis, uh, Bob Rucker being one of the ones I'm most familiar with, they postulate that their radiation that they think burst out from the body of Jesus of Nazareth when he was divinely resurrected, um, and depending on who you talk to, engage in some interdimensional travel. And as a result, as we all know, when you travel interdimensionally, right, when you go through interdimensional travel, that leads to a burst of neutrons and protons, obviously. Like, uh, and But it can't just burst out from the body in all directions because then you get the uh, distortion effect that he showed in the video. So they say it had to have gone straight up and down. And that way you wouldn't get this distortion effect, right? So ba that is what the, the the explanation I am expecting to get, by the way, from the trap opponents. That they're going to say, oh, well, look, we predicted this, whatever. Anyways, so none of that is particularly groundbreaking, though the image, the, the, the graph is super cool. But what is interesting is the next part, which if you were paying attention to the video, he kind of showed it there. Uh, the more the more interesting result in this paper is he did that same mesh with not just a full body, but also a low relief. So let me pull the paper back up here. Um, this is the body he used for the full 3D image. Um, he tried to make it look kind of like Jesus in the cloth, you know. Uh, we saw that in the video. Okay, so this is showing that distortion effect, this figure here, which is figure three. Figure four is showing the relief. So this is like a flattened uh, model, like someone had carved out a not completely flat, but uh, very much flattened um, image. Yeah, kind of like a stamp. That's a that's a good way to describe it. It's kind of like if you were trying to make a stamp that you would like cover with ink and then stamp on something kind of like that. And so uh, he did the full body and then he did the exact same analysis, but using this relief as if someone had draped it over that. And, and what you can see here is that it looks a lot more like the Shroud of Turin. Uh, good point. I will... Google up the paper and I'll put it in the description and also put it in the chat unless somebody beats me to it. Um, anyway, so this is the, uh, I should say though, this is not an open access paper. So if you don't have like a um, uh, library subscription or, you know, like you're a student or something, I, I got it via my university's library. Um, but if you don't have that, you might um, have to buy it, but let me, there is the uh, paper there. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so the relief is there, as you can see. Um, but the next, uh, well, so Prixie, uh, Sci-Hub, you definitely want to stay away from Sci-Hub because what it has is free uh, peer-reviewed papers from decades that are just posted that anybody could take them. Um, and we don't endorse piracy here, so definitely stay away from Sci-Hub. 
I did check Sci-Hub just so I could warn my viewers, and it is not at least yet on Sci-Hub. Um, but you know, who knows what will be on there later. Uh, you can also, uh, as Procyon WS says, ask the author. Often authors just, if, if you're polite uh, and talk about the paper and just ask politely, very often they are overjoyed to give you a copy of their paper because they just want people to read it. Anyway, so that here's the relief, but uh, the next image I think is a little bit more clear. You can see the relief next to the distorted, so you can see how much clearer it is. But the best one is this right here. This is the real money shot. So in the middle, you've got the Shroud of Turin and the negative version. On the left, you've got what it would look like with that distorted 3D on a, on a uh, body. And on the right, this overlay, this green overlay, is what his uh, bob his relief uh, was. So if the if contact with the cloth is what transferred the image, this is the image you would get, and it is remarkably similar to what is on the Shroud of Turin. Like eerily similar. The two are very very close. Um, not perfectly close, but I mean it's a pretty good first approximation. Uh, so. What does this mean? Well, let's start with what it doesn't mean. What it doesn't mean is that we know how the image was made. This does not solve the, the mystery. Uh, because while this does show some uh, some matching between a relief and the image on the cloth, it, it doesn't say <clears throat> how the image was transferred, if indeed it was transferred, by contact. So the cloth has been examined, obviously, by Stirrup, probably most famously, uh, but by others since then. And so far as anyone has been able to tell, there's no pigments, or at least Sterp wasn't able to find pigments. That was disputed by one individual, but the prevailing view is that there's no pigments. Um, so no like paint or anything in the uh, image. The variant of color that you see, um, if you look, you can see it's darker in some places and lighter in some places. That is not because the color on the fibers is darker or lighter. It's because the density of darkened fibers is greater or lesser. The, the more densely packed the darkened fibers are, the darker the color is. Um, and so that is an odd thing if you were just going to paint it. Um, how did, uh, though, I mean, if you were going to paint it in a way that only painted some fibers, anyway, you get it. The, the point is that there's a lot of unusual things about the image that would need to be explained. And this makes no attempt to explain it wasn't point of, the point of the paper. So even if we knew for a fact, that it was a low relief, as the paper suggests, that did that was involved in making the image that still wouldn't tell us how it was made, right? This also won't quiet the uh, Shroud of Turin proponents at all. I ex I don't expect them to. I don't I don't expect this to convince anybody who thinks the Shroud of Turin is authentic because they already have a ready-made explanation. They already have the extremely popular radiation hypothesis. Excuse me, and that hypothesis already includes an explanation for why the image isn't distorted. And so they don't need this relief in order to um, in order to explain anything. Now, of course, uh, where does that radiation come from? Why do we get that kind of radiation? Why is the radiation going up and down instead of all over the place like radiation does? All those questions, the answer to that is shut up, stop asking questions. But <laughs> uh, anyways, um, what this what does this study do? Uh, this study does show a shocking similarity between the contact pattern of the low relief and the image we see on the cloth. Uh, and that can perhaps provide some guidance to later researchers who do look into how the image was made and might give them kind of uh, narrow down their possible searches. They might look for something. So for example, um, imagine that the relief was made out of metal and you heated up the metal and that scorch the fibers on the cloth, then you'd get contact with that pigment. I am not saying that is what happened. I'm just, that's an example of something that someone could look into armed with this information. So does this settle the debate conclusively? No, but it has a lot of really cool, has a cool video. And uh, I think it's, um, it's a neat explanation or neat example of what might have happened. Uh, Chowder asks, did he account for fabric uh, st stiffness and other real world factors. So if we go into the paper, he shows his methodology. Um, so if we read the paper here, 
I'm just going to look through it real quick. Uh, he talks about uh, he used Blender's default settings for generic cotton fabric influenced by gravity. So presumably, I'm not very familiar with Blender. Dapper Dino, Dino would know a lot more about that. Maybe I'll ask him next time I talk to him, actually. Um, yeah, he would definitely know. I'll ask. And uh, if the answer is no, I'll put a comment in the um, description. So the answer appears he did something to account for real-world factors. I don't know how well Blender does with actually simulating fabric stiffness. I don't know. But Dapper might. Um, okay, so this won't settle the debate, but it is an interesting piece of information. It's a really cool paper. Um, and if you are so inclined and you have all the software, he says it was all open access. So if you have the time, you could probably reproduce his uh, results. And then maybe you can uh, share here. And if, if you do, uh, tell you what, if anyone does reproduce the results and wants to share it on this channel, shoot me an email and I will happily give you the tiny platform I have to show your work. So that's what we have going on, like that's the, I don't want to keep you any longer than I have to. That's what's going on with the Shroud of Turin now. Cool paper, not going to settle the debate. So if you're here for the Shroud of Turin stuff, you can feel free to leave. You've gotten all the information I have to give you. If you're still here, uh, hi, it's been a minute. It's been like three months or something since I posted. Um, so what's been going on with me, if people are interested? Uh, what's been going on is I live, uh, you may not have realized this if you're not like in America, uh, but America is already a capitalist hellscape. And then on top of that, we are rapidly sliding into a fascist autocracy. Uh, and that takes a lot, it takes a lot of energy <laughs> to live in that kind of scenario. Um, so you may know that I'm a nuclear engineer. Uh, surprisingly in today's economy that's not enough to support a family so i also work a second job and that second job has just like been killing me lately i uh i do cost analysis for for loans for the government um i'm trying not to go into too much detail but i do cost analysis and i do it for a little company and they used to have a full-time guy and i would take up the extra work uh and that guy he uh he quit he moved on to bigger and better things. And so I am doing all of the work. And so I won't give the exact number, but basically the amount of work I would normally have done in an entire year, I have already tripled that amount of work and we're just in August, right? So like, it's a lot. <laughs> um, on top of that, I have been uh, doing a lot of volunteering and organizing protests in my local area. So I'm hooked up with... Um, 5051 is the organization I work with and they have um, they have groups all throughout the country. And so we've been doing a protest basically every month um, and I've been helping to organize those. So uh, it's a really great organization. They're not the only one. There's others um, that you can get uh, you can get in contact with. Uh, Prixie says, are they at least paying you triple? For them, I am a contractor. I get paid per project. So yes, I have been got for, I've gotten triple the work, but I've gotten triple the pay, which is great. The money's awesome. Uh, the, the lack of free time is less awesome, but, uh, sadly my children insist on eating and being uh, sheltered. Plus I have one kid now going to college. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but that's what's been that's why i haven't been as active on youtube as i would like it's just between two jobs and four kids and protest organizing something's got to give and the thing has been youtube uh but i appreciate everyone coming out when i can get on there i'm going to try to get on as much as i can uh i don't know how much that'll be but <laughs> i'll be here when i can uh, so thanks everyone for showing up to this stream i really appreciate it uh if you thought it was useful uh, drop a like, drop a comment, you know, the algorithm stuff. Uh, let me know if there's something you think I would be in or you would be interested in hearing my take on. Does not have to be Shroud of Turin. Pe a lot of people ask me to talk about this, so I am. But um, if there's anything else you think would be interesting, drop it in the comments and maybe I'll uh, be able to jump on another live stream and do that. Live streams because I don't have to edit the video because, you know, I don't like uh, uh, because editing is even more time. <laughs> it's way easier to do live. Uh, but yeah, anyways. So that's the stream. Thanks for sh uh, showing up. Really appreciate it. And remember, until next time, you've always got reason to doubt.